Natalie Bennett is the first Australian to lead a UK political party. Under her charge, membership of the Greens has quadrupled and they've gone from being a fringe party to giving the Lib Dems a run for their money in the polls. But many voters are yet to be convinced if their policies are as realistic as they are idealistic. Natalie Bennett. Thanks very much for joining me. It's great to be with you. <laughs> and, and just for the record, uh, yes, I was Australian by birth, but I've chosen to become British. I am a British citizen, just for the record. <laughs> Good to know. Um, we've got so many questions from me and from our readers. Mm -hmm. um, let's get started with Bez. How do you, Natalie? This is Bez from Happy Mondays and the Reality Party. What do you consider to be the small serious threat we face as a nation at this moment? Nice one. Well, thank you very much, Bez. Um, and we have a threat, obviously, of climate change, but we also have the threat of the state of our economy and the state of our society. And those three things really all fit together. We've got an economy that isn't delivering for the common good. We've got a social crisis where one in five workers is on less than a living wage, where so many people are struggling to keep food on the table, keep a roof over their head. And you know, we are currently in Britain collectively using the resources of three planets every year but we've only got one planet. Mm. So we have a whole model of way of doing things that simply has to change. Obviously though, um, a party like UKIP is getting a lot of traction at this election with a fear about immigration and threats from a rise of Islamic extremism. Your party has discussed making membership of terror groups like ISIS legal. Uh, is that the case? No, to, to be absolutely clear about that, yeah. obviously, you know, IS, ISIS, Al-Qaeda are absolutely horrific organisations and any way supporting them at all, you know, is should be an illegal act and should be pursued to the Even full extent, extent, extent of the law. But if you're supporting ISIS, which membership would be? Is it really green policy that you would seek to replace the British Army with civilian and military volunteers? No. What our manifesto will be stating very clearly is that we, you know, there's already plans to significantly cut the size of the British military. Yeah. We support those plans. We think those are, are in the right range. Although, of course, what we also want to do is remove end Trident nuclear missiles and not replace them. Can I move you on to a question from Lily Vellix, who's a student at your old school in Sydney, MLC. <laughs> You've said that feminism was your first politics. Education in the 70s was very different to what it is today. So what did influence you in your values in social change and women's leadership? If it goes back to my feminism actually starts at age five, uh, when I was told, because you're a girl, you're not allowed to have a bicycle. But it also instilled in me a real sense of you know, that the world could be and should be a much fairer place and that gender shouldn't be something that stopped you from doing things you wanted to do. At MLC school, I'm sure it's a different place now, but when I went there, they really hadn't decided whether they wanted us to be solicitors or wives of solicitors. Mm. And there was a very strong sort of push towards, you know, you might just want to, want, want to not have a career, not, not get involved in, in the outside world, not be involved in public life. And there wasn't a lot of encouragement for involvement in those sorts of things. Yeah, I'd like to ask you a bit about that, because um, you're saying that growing up in Australia in the 1970s was a bit like growing up with the British attitudes of the 1950s. Mm. Um, have you called Australia anti-intellectual? Um, there's a very strong strand of intellectual, intellectual thought in Australian life. I mean, that's, that's mm. not controversial. That's something many people have yeah. said over the years. So given but these kind of gender equalities and the difficulties growing mm. up, why is it that you chose not to stay there and kind of tackle these problems <laughs> in Australian politics? Uh, well, I, I think you, uh, it's, I came to Britain first in 1990 as a classic sort of backpacker. Yeah. Um, and I've just found British life, British culture very attractive yeah. um, and I always thought that I would eventually move here. It took me a little while along the way for, for various personal reasons. I've chosen to be British because I love the British way of life, the British culture. Lily also asked you a bit about leadership mm -hmm. and I'm going to have to talk to you about the brain fades. Mm -hmm. You have had a couple of catastrophic ones. What went through your head after that LBC interview? Well of course obviously at that time you know I was absolutely devastated at the time but I think you know it, if nothing else, proved that I'm human yeah. and that I'm not, you know, a, a product of the spin machine. Um, and, you know, that's one of many hundreds of interviews that I've done as Green Party leader. And since then, you know, I've done any questions, question time, mm. BBC Three's free speech. The reality of life is you take a knock, but you have to move on. There have been these reports of you having emergency media training. The one newspaper reported that you had to be told to stop talking about hedgehogs. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I, I will still, still talk about hedgehogs. No one has told me not to talk about hedgehogs. Uh, you know, they're lovely, they're, they're lovely animals and they're very much, you know, we're seeing their numbers plummet as a result of uh, the, the, the nature of, uh, you know, what we're doing to the but British countryside. More relevant. 
Uh, well, <laughs> it, indeed, and I'm very happy to talk about housing <laughs> policy as well. But but I think you know it's it's important to be to be an individual. And yeah. yes, I am doing media training, thinking about the leader debates, which we're delighted to be in. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure as every other leader. Obviously, everyone has off days. Um, there has been a bit of a knock to the party, though, as a result of these two interviews, the Andrew Neil one as well. Um, in fact, I met with a Labour MP and I said to him, listen, convince me why I should vote Labour and not a progressive party like the Greens. And he said, Natalie Bennett's done that job for me. I mean, was there any point after those interviews with all the negative media that surrounded it that you thought, maybe I should step down? No, I mean, I, I have a job to do. I was elected by the Green Party members originally two and a half years ago and mm. re-elected unopposed about six, nine months ago. Um, you know, I have a, have a job to do. Uh, I'm part of a team of people. Of course, you know, people are very well aware of Caroline Lucas, the Green MP, Jenny mm. Jones, our member of the House of Lords, mm. our MEPs. Mm. We're a whole team of people and we're all working together. Isn't the problem, though, uh, of course, like, you know, there, there are difficulties in certain moments and kind of confusions in certain pit parts of interviews, but some of the policies just don't stack up. Like, for example, the citizen's income. Mm -hmm. Malcolm Torrey, the man who actually came up with the citizen's income, has actually written in The Guardian, the poorest people would end up worse off. Do you regret announcing this policy in January on the Andrew Marr if it wasn't quite properly thought through? Well, this actually has been Green Party policy for, for decades. Mm. And it sets out a really important principle that is now more pressing than it's ever been. If you look at particularly with Ian Duncan Smith's you know, vicious um, and utterly random welfare benefit sanctions. Mm. You look at the situation with people on zero hours contracts. So many people now in Britain are just being left with nothing, not able to put food on the table, really struggling. And a citizen's income or a universal basic income mm. provides people with a foundation of certainty, of freedom from fear. Now, the Green Party is very committed to this policy. We will be announcing it and putting, setting out a whole set of figures on this when we release our manifesto. Okay. So it will um, be in the manifesto? No, no. What, well, what we're saying is that this is a big, complex change to the welfare system. We think that it would take more than one the term of one government to actually introduce this bigger change to the welfare system. Mm. But what we'll be doing is putting out that consultative document on the figures. And we're absolutely committed to ensuring that nobody at the, among the poorest in society, but we were worse off underneath the citizens' income. If people do vote Green and you don't want to be part of a coalition, would you, for example, turn down the job of Energy and Climate Change Secretary? Well, we've said we, we wouldn't be part of the coalition, therefore we're not taking the ministerial cars. If you don't actually want to govern, what are you doing in Westminster? Well, of, of course, you know, we're, we're saying that's at the current situation. Obviously, we eventually you know, want, to, want, want, want to have a Green government run the country. That's the direction we're heading in. There's been a little... Uh, possibly misrepresentation of what is actually uh, green yes. policy in the tabloid media. <laughs> so, uh, Natalie, if you wouldn't mind, there should be no limits on migration to the UK. That's not Green Party policy. We believe in a controlled but a humane and fair immigration policy. OK, the BBC must show educational programming during prime time. That's something that the Policies for a Sustainable Society encourage, but it won't be in the manifesto. Brothels should be decriminalised. Uh, Yes, we support um, what's known as the New Zealand model, which is, I believe is the best, what, best way of keeping vulnerable women and men safe. I think there's very strong evidence for that. So the yes to that. Football clubs should become cooperatives. Uh, we certainly encourage that and support that. Uh, and I think that's a very popular policy. OK, so you would want to put wind farms in the place of army bases. Uh, that's not policy. It might be a long-term aspiration. We'd like to see that. But I think we should put wind farms in the best places where there's the best wind resources. <laughs> the Queen should be moved to a council house? <laughs> that's definitely not Green Party policy. Okay. <laughs> I've got a question for you now from someone who might be familiar for you from your days at The Guardian. That's our editor-in-chief, Alan Rusbridger. Will you support The Guardian's campaign over divestment? That means getting your money out of the worst polluters uh, of fossil fuels uh, and the people who own the large reserves of oil and gas and coal. I very strongly support The Guardian's fossil fuel divestment campaign. This is an absolutely critical area, and it's an area where this government has been so much heading in the wrong direction. You mm. look at the budget that we've just had. We had 1.3 billion in tax breaks for North Sea oil. And over the course of this government, we've seen 300 times as much subsidies for fossil fuels as we have for renewables. In terms of um, greens and green policies, mm -hmm. um, the Green Party doesn't have that much experience in government that voters can judge you on, but you mm. are in charge of one council, and it, well, it's a minority administration, that's in Brighton, Brighton and Hove Council. But that city council ranks 302nd out of 326 for its recycling record. Is that embarrassing? 
Well, I think you have to look at the, the circumstances behind this. And first of all, as you pointed out, we're a minority administration in Brighton and Hove. Mm -hmm. um, we actually tried to, as a minority administration, introduce a uh, trial food waste recycling program. Mm -hmm. Labor voted with the Tories to prevent that happening. Well, recycling or reuse has actually dropped by 2% in the past four years in Brighton and Hope. Well, what, what we're doing is, is focusing on you know, changing the direction of travel, very much focusing on that. Okay. And, you know, I'm really proud of the achievements of a minority administration there. They made Brighton and Hove a living wage council. They introduced a 10 to 1 ratio, so the top paid person in the council isn't paid more than 10 times the lowest paid person. They've you know, kept all the branch libraries open. It's, it's There's a huge record smooth. of it. There are other things that weren't. I mean, like Meat Free Mondays, um, that which would have banned meat pies in council staff, run staff canteens. That proposal was ditched. There was another, I've got to ask you about this, whether this was even true, that there was a planned, planned introduction of livestock onto one of the main routes into Brighton as a speed reduction package, and that was apparently deferred not even cancelled. Uh, I think what I come to in a lot of these things is I'd urge people and you mm -hmm. not to believe everything you read in the so right, wing, right, right wing newspapers. The, uh, the Meat Free Mondays was a yeah. proposal by a private contractor. It wasn't the council at all. That was something that, that they trialled didn't work, they dropped. Mm. Uh, the issue in terms of the National Park was they were looking at ways uh, to you know, make the environment better mm. and seeing how they, could, how, how, how they could use livestock for that. But that's... Not th putting on main roads. That's not something mm. we'll see rolled out nationwide if we get uh, greens in Westminster. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Although we do you know, certainly want to look at 20 mile per hour speed limits everywhere where people live, work and shop, which would greatly improve people's environment. We have just one last quick fire round, then, then mm. we'll let you go. Mm -hmm. um, if you were an animal, what animal would you be and why? <laughs> oh, um, oh, I really hate these kind of things, I, to be honest. Many people do. Yes. Uh, um, oh, ah. Uh, I think I might, I might be a cow. I think that it's very peaceful. I, I do enjoy leaning on a fence and watching cows in a field. <laughs> Not great for the environment, though, actually, Natalie. Well, I, I'm, afraid, I'm afraid we're just thinking about what's nice and warm and comfortable. Okay. Quinoa or chips? Ah, uh, chips. What's your least green habit? Oh, I have too long a showers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Natalie Bennett, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you very much. What I've clearly said is that SNP MPs will never help David Cameron put a majority together, either through a formal coalition or any kind of informal arrangement.